Alrighty, so make sure you come back over to classwork. We're going to go to question two, which is pretty messy looking. Um, so I want to make sure you're following. So you're just going to go to week three, question two. And we need to start all the way at the bottom. The first thing we need to do is do the first exercise, which unfortunately we're not going to be able to copy and paste this table. So on a separate sheet of paper, let's go ahead and write down our SDIPs and our grand totals. We're gonna need those two because we're going to eventually need to put this in our Desmo to create a graph. We need a grand total versus our SDIP. So I'm just going on a separate sheet of paper, writing our nine, 10, 11, 12, the whole thing. And then the grand total for one was Six six two point nine one, then seven nine zero point forty eight, and so forth. So you're gonna write all of these and all of these because that's what we're gonna need for this first exercise. All right. Once you have this written down, I didn't continue. Make sure you have it all. We're gonna go to our Desmos again. I'm going to clear this out. This is from question one. And now we need to add a table. So we're going to hit this plus button and we need a table. You need to do your nine, 10, 11, so forth that I'm grabbing from this. So you're just copying this table over here. I had us write it down that way. It's easy to see. So then over here, it was 6692.91790.48, and so forth. And when you're done, it'll start graphing it. So go ahead and just start adding that in. Alrighty, so once you have all the numbers typed in, which is a pain in the butt, you should have your uh, scatter plot. It might not look like this. You might have to like zoom in and out depending on it, but just make sure, you know, you get all of your dots and take a picture of your scatter plot. Alrighty, so if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we just did this. We were able to make the scatter plot. So let's go up to the next one. The next part of question two is asking us for the regression line. So go ahead and go back to your Desmo with our graph, and we need to write that equation again. So we're going to go up to this plus sign and write the expression, the first one. And we need our y1. And then we need that squiggly line, so shift, and then this button up here. Remember, it's mx plus b, so m, x. We need x1 because that's what it's labeled as, so x1, and then plus b. So our line that best fits, which you can just write on a separate sheet of paper, would be y equals uh, m is 64.92 I went ahead and rounded up because nine and five and above round give it a shove so it'll become a 92 x plus b which is 187.42 so there's our uh, line that best fits M and B, I just simply grabbed from there. Uh, the question also asks uh, what the correlation, so correlation is that R, so 0.98. Because that's so close to one, and you see most of the dots fall actually on the line, there's a strong correlation, meaning that this line is pretty close to all the data points. So we have a pretty good uh, line. So just go ahead and write in a sentence, you know, because R is 0.98 close to one, we have a strong correlation. All right, 
and that's the second part. Go ahead, uh, on a separate sheet of paper, make sure you have this equation written, and then write, you know, a sentence. Uh, because R is 0.98, uh, which is close to 1, there's a strong correlation. Take a picture uh, and submit it for that portion. All right, back to the classwork, week three, number two. We've done this. We've done this. So now we're here. So we're going to do the Excel. Uh, you can type in your answers um, and then take, yeah, and then take a picture. So we're going to need to complete this graph, um, this table. It looks confusing. Um, but with Desmos, it's going to be really easy. No big deal. Uh, we're going to need to do a choice. We're going to need to do 9 through 14. And then, again, 16 through 35. Um, which is just a lot of repeating. Um, so we need to find this. To do this, we are going to use the equation I equals P times R times T. P is at 15, so it's the 1,127.52, um, which is always going to be that. R is 0 0.07, that's in our given, it's 7%, but it's going to be the same. And then T is that 15th one minus whichever number you're trying to get. Um, and then you need to subtract. So this is what we're going to put in our calculator. We're going to take... Our original 127.52 and we're going to subtract that with all of this information so that 1127.52 times let's not use the dot let's use parentheses 0 0.07 times that 15 minus SDIP we don't like all those letters so let's just use X to go ahead and uh, replace that with that. So we're gonna put this equation in our Desmo. So let's go over to Desmo. Let's clear all this information out from the last time. And let's type what I just wrote. So we got 1127 point 52 minus, we need parenthesis, that same number, 1127.52, another parenthesis, 0 0.07, close that, another one, 15 minus x, and we need to do a double parenthesis there. So make sure that is typed into your computer. You're gonna go over to settings and we want this to be a table. So hit that table. We need, so if I go back to my table, we need from nine to 14. Those are our X's. So go back to my Desmo. We don't need negative two, we need nine. So I'm just deleting nine. Then we need 10, 11, 12, 13, oh, that's 113, and 14. So you're going to take this, these numbers, and put them in your table, just exactly as you see them. Go ahead and type them in. these numbers in those empty spots. Okay, now that we got one through 14, nine through 14, we need to do 16 through 35. Um, this is, it's a quick, easy change. So now we're above 15, so we're still going to use our same equation pretty much. none of that change just now we're going to take whatever number so say we're trying to find the 32nd one we're going to take that 32nd minus 15. 
So we're just switching this order. That's the only difference. So if we go back to our Desmo, um, I'll just delete this so you can see it. We can retype in Closes parentheses. So the oh, that's not what you should write. This should be minus. All right. So that is what you should put in your calculator. This time, go up to settings and let's make that a table. So now we need 16 through 35. So I'm going to write 16, 17, 18, 19. 20, 21, 22, and I'm going to keep going and take these numbers and put them in our column until the whole thing is complete. Um, take a picture of your table so that way you can go ahead and um, submit it. So carry this down to 35, take these numbers and put it into your table. And that's gonna be that. Alrighty, so scroll to the bottom. We've done this. We've done this. We just did this. So now we are here, I think. Yep, this is what we're at. So we're going to go, so this is exercise four, make sure we're exercise four, and copy, open up this Excel sheet. We're gonna do pretty much the same thing as we did the last time, just a different equation. So we're gonna also use our Desmo, which mine has gotten really far away, which is over here. Let's exit out of what's there. So we need two different equations. The first one is for numbers nine through 19. So we're gonna put this equation in there. So the equation is 1127.52, parenthesis 1.07, parenthesis. Then we need to get it up top. To do that, you use your caret. So you're gonna hit shift and then six. And if you notice, you should be blinking there. So shift and at the same time six for your caret. And we need that to be X minus 15 and close the parenthesis. So that is what should be in your Desmo, and we want this as a table as well. So click on here and make it a table. So like I said, we're using this first equation from nine through 19. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and continue going down to 19. Take these numbers right here and put them in your graph to 19. So all of those should be filled in from your table. 